If you're thinking about advertising your business on a city telephone utility pole, forget about it. The trouble could be more than you bargained for. We'll tell you more. And it's not too late to cash in on Proposition 301, but the deadline's coming up fast. These stories and more next on The Issues. Welcome to On the Issues, I'm Paula Moore. Advertising your businesses on city utility poles could buy you trouble. Marcos Nahada has more in this report. You see them on phone poles everywhere. Some promise instant beauty, others promise quick weight loss, and still others promise that you will gain money. But some people say it's nothing more than local businesses putting up graffiti in their neighborhoods, commercial graffiti. Someone uh, could take some spray paint and actually spray paint a divorce for $50 on the side of a fence. So we look at that at the same way as we do these. Many companies like the divorce store use telephone pole signs as an inexpensive way to advertise. But starting in mid-February, it won't be inexpensive anymore. In fact, companies like this will be fined anywhere from $250 to $2,500 per sign. That's according to an amended ordinance passed this week by the city council. Businesses will have about a month to learn about the new rules and take down any signs they've put up before facing these stiffer fines. Well, there's a lot of money on this poll, <laughs> and we're anxious to get the signs off. Certainly, they, uh, they're selling their products, but if you notice, uh, uh, they're up here illegally. They don't actually pay a fee to the, uh, the city to have a legal sign. Ed Davis says the people in his neighborhood are protective of their community, and these signs are simply acts of trespassing and vandalism. If they want to advertise uh, for uh, their products, uh, they can uh, do it in the newspaper, in the penny saver, or any other ways uh, that everyone else does it legally. The companies we contacted wouldn't comment on camera, but they said they would comply with the new amendment. For On the Issues, I'm Marcos Najera. On the Issues Now welcomes Vice Mayor Dave Siebert and George Britton, Deputy City Manager. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations. Well, thank as our you. New Vice Mayor. Now, this is an area that there's been a lot of controversy, and there are thousands of these signs all around the city. Thousands of signs, thousands of complaints by our citizens. You know, it, it's sort of funny when we started readdressing this uh, within the last year uh, in the Environment and Natural Resources Subcommittee. We started receiving calls, and every meeting we would have, we'd have different people showing up saying, I've been taking these signs down in my neighborhood you know, for a year now, and they'd bring in stacks of signs. And, and you realize how much of a problem it's been for our society with these. And it's, it's just commercial graffiti, and it's all over. It, it's from one end of the city to the other, and, and nobody is immune from it. Now, Vice Mayor, just yesterday, recently, we, we had the council vote unanimously. The council actually took the formal vote yesterday. We had a policy uh, uh, decision on it earlier, but the formal vote was yesterday, and the new ordinance will take effect on February 20th. Okay. George, tell us what does the new ordinance say, and what are the fines? Let's talk about that. Okay, that's, that's a good question. The new ordinance says, as the existing ordinance says, that commercial signs in the public right-of-way on utility poles, which are in the right-of-way, on street signals and street lights, are illegal. So the ordinance really doesn't change what's legal and illegal today. Those signs are illegal today. The two major changes are one, like you said, the fine. Currently the fines are in the range of $25 and they frankly have not gotten uh, the attention of these commercial graffiti artists. Uh, the new fine is $250 per count, which is per sign, uh, not to exceed $2,500. Okay. So it's, it's a serious, serious uh, fine. The second area, and the one that I, I think legitimate businesses have to be worried about uh, who advertise this way, is that now the business advertising, not the sign poster, will be presumed responsible for the sign. So if I'm advertising my services on a sign, and if we choose and eventually, because you didn't respond to education, you didn't respond to requests to take down the sign, to prosecute you, uh, you, the advertiser, not the person who put the sign up, are presumptively responsible uh, and rebuttably responsible for that sign. You then would be subject to the $250 plus dollar fine. 
Per sign. Per sign. Okay. That's a lot of money for some a people. A lot of money. What about people that put up these lost dog signs? Huge reward. Those, those are important to neighborhoods. Uh, the visual trash that's going on, the dangerous uh, activities on signals and poles where they either could interfere with the operation of these facilities are really what we're after. Neighborhoods aren't too concerned about lost dogs or the incidental yard sale. Most people know that you don't leave yard sale signs up because people come at 6 in the morning on Sunday to find out why you're no longer open. So there's a discipline that goes on there. Okay. Uh, but uh, it's still an illegal sign. We don't encourage it. We ask you to use the supermarket bulletin board. We ask you to use uh, door hangers in your neighborhood if you wish to, to advertise or place these signs on private property where they can uh, be placed with obviously the permission of the property owner. Uh, but for those incidental uses, no, that's not the target. The target of this is what the vice mayor said and, and really he's been a leader in bringing this to the staff. We've had this ordinance uh, but the target is this visual pollution which is damaging our neighborhoods. Vice Mayor, do you think this is going to help clean up the problem? Uh, I have very little doubt. Uh, and again, I don't want to leave the impression that we're out to find people. I would much rather see an educational campaign which we're going to be kicking off within the month. Uh, I would rather see that work. I would rather see people voluntarily take them down. If they choose not to, the severe violators will go after first. And again, the fine is minimum $250 per sign. And uh, maybe that's what it takes to get some people's attention. If that's it, so be it. Uh, we will do that. But again, that is not our primary consideration. We do not want this as a revenue generator. In fact, tracking down some of these people may take a significant amount of resources to start with. So uh, it's definitely not a revenue generator. It's just to enhance the quality of life and, and to, to clean up this blight. That's what it is. Vice Mayor, do you think that people are going to respond? Is there sort of a grace period that they can take them down without having to pay $250? Well, as George says, uh, the ordinance as far as what's legal and illegal has not changed. Okay. The amount of the fine has. Uh, they have until February 20th to get them down because after that, theoretically, they're in violation of the new ordinance and the fine goes from $25 to a minimum of $250. So now when you see that 30 pounds and 30 days for 30 bucks. Well, that's it's going to cost that. That's a popular one, too. That's a popular one. It's <laughs> in my district. Uh, it's going to be $250 minimum per sign for that person advertising there. And um, hopefully they will get the message. George, are we talking about hundreds of these signs or thousands? Are these I think we're talking tens of thousands of signs okay. throughout the city. Um, Arizona Public Service and Salt River Project are partnering with the city. Uh, in this project and they estimate that most of their poles in, within neighborhoods have one or more signs on them. So I think there's probably somewhere in the range of 12 to 15,000 signs up plus today illegally. Okay. Now what about the city of Phoenix? Are we taking the lead in this or is this happening in other cities? I think other cities are struggling with the same issue. Um, we've been contacted by some of our neighboring cities as to what are we doing, how are we going to do the education. And let me re-emphasize what the Vice Mayor said. Uh, the direction from the council is to get voluntary compliance. The model is the anti-graffiti campaign, uh, which I think we're all very proud of. The reason that works is that the neighborhood, the businesses, the legitimate people in the community say, this is unacceptable. And we hope to make these signs as unacceptable as littering, as unacceptable as graffiti. And frankly, if you're a business and you want to do business in our community, please don't trash our neighborhoods. Okay. Vice Mayor, what about early responses? Have you heard from people that this is, this is what they want? Received hundreds of calls, and I'm sure all the council offices have. Uh, I have yet to hear one negative call from a constituent. Now, you have a few questions from businesses to make sure they're in compliance, you know, and, and question about real estate signs, and as long as they're put up properly, it's, it's not a problem. But from every constituent that is called in, it's always been a complaint. They want them gone. Uh, I think the council realizes that. The vote yesterday was unanimous, and, and we want to send a strong message, and we'd like to use this show as part of the educational process. Please take down the signs that you have, quit placing them up in the right-of-way, uh, we even have signs. We had a gentleman come down yesterday at the formal hearing, and he took down a sign, the same one that I've taken down several times in my district, 
uh, that's the person building some of these signs to put up in the right of way. And I have one here if you'd like to see it. Okay. This is the one that the gentleman brought down yesterday. Like I say, I've pulled several of these down in my district, and it's actually advertising signs. Boy. And this okay. sign, as you can see, says uh, $1.25 each for one color, $1.50 each for two colors. Now it's going to be $250 each, no matter how many colors. Okay. So for that person that's putting these signs up, uh, beware. Uh, we can still catch the people putting them there, or we can catch the people who are receiving the advertising, but we are going to catch them. Okay. George, do people tend to put these kinds of signs up late at night or during nondescript hours or what? Yes. Uh, talking with the police department, which is partnering in this education and eventually in the enforcement campaign, they say that these installations generally go in after midnight till about 5 in the morning. Uh, there's a whole industry built around these illegal signs. Uh, as you saw, there's an 888 eight, eight, eight number that you can call to buy mm -hmm. these signs. So uh, what's happened is what started out as, uh, you know, fairly benign activities has now blossomed into an industry that competes with legitimate businesses. Some of the calls the council has received, and I know the vice mayor received, are from businesses who play by the rules and saying, why should they get free advertising on the public right-of-way when I have to put legitimate signs up and advertise through legitimate courses. I'm not being treated fairly. Okay, so now this will at least level. Are you going to have to hire additional people now to um, go out and actually take the signs down? Initially, no. Okay. Um, the, the vice mayor's uh, direction through the subcommittee has been, let's see what we can do within our own resources. Uh, the street transportation department that owns the signals and the lights, Arizona Public Service and Salt River Project have come forward with a campaign fund of $25,000. With that, we hope to do advertising, public education, and some incentives to neighborhood organizations in what are going to be cleanup programs. Uh, if those work, and we believe most people will voluntarily comply, then the enforcement activities can be done within our own existing capacity. If it doesn't work, the vice mayor has asked that we come back to his committee in June, I believe. I believe June. June uh, to uh, recommend additional actions. At that time, we may consider a graffiti crew, like we have for spray paint graffiti, for removal. But that's a very expensive approach. We prefer not to do that. Uh, the other option is, as the graffiti uh, cleanup, is to make the pole owner responsibility, uh, responsible, excuse me, for the sign. That's kind of the last option. Uh, and, and I want to commend both APS and SRP for them coming forward uh, and working with us because they recognize it as a safety and a community blight issue. Vice Mayor, are you optimistic right now that these signs will come down? People will uh, listen to the they public education? They will come education? down yeah, one way or the other. They, they will come down. Mm -hmm. uh, one word of caution I would like to give is, is I don't want to encourage people to go out there and, and create any safety hazards. Some of these signs are extremely high. Uh, some of them have been attached with nails. And some of these power poles actually have conduits with live wires in them running down the pole. And so, you know, we're not encouraging people just to go out there and rip down everybody's signs. What we are saying is we will have cleanup efforts. We will have supervision so nobody gets hurt. Uh, we are telling the people, you put the sign up, you either get it down or, or we're going to go after you for the fine. Uh, but again, we want people to be careful. We've had actually incidents where uh, neighborhood um, people have gone out there to pull down signs, and they run into the person who put the sign there. And they get into a confrontation, and sometimes it turns physical. And, and we don't want that to happen. Uh, we will help take care of the problem. Like George said, PD will be involved, along with uh, other departments within the city of Phoenix. And we do have a tremendous cooperation uh, amongst the utilities also. So you're not encouraging residents then to go and take we, the We don't want to put anybody in harm's way mm -hmm. you know, whatsoever. We want to be very careful. For the people that put them up there, uh, we are saying don't do it again. If you put some up, you better get them down or we'll find you. Okay, well, that's pretty simple, pretty direct. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, George.